I was popping. It's your boy, Big Rich. Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Mob Story Season 3. Thursday evening business. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I got a little bit of sour diesel myself. Thank you very much. A classic and always a fan favorite. Shout out to Tom Milwaukee, a.k.a. Milwaukee Tommy, a.k.a. Gets Down to Business. Thank you for sending me this article, sir. Let's get right into it. This is coming out of the Chicago Sun-Times by the Sun-Times staff. Salute to you guys at the Chicago Sun-Times. According to FBI files, Milwaukee mob boss Frank Balistrieri had close ties to Chicago outfit. Making Chicago mob overlord Tony Accardo mad was never a good idea. So when a crew of burglars had the audacity to break into Accardo's riverfront home in 1978 while he was out on town, they were hunted down by his underlings and one by one tortured and killed. And Milwaukee's longtime reputed mob leader Frank Balistrieri got into hot water with Accardo in the 1960s. That apparently was because Balistrieri's people killed someone who wasn't supposed to have been killed, according to records that are now part of the Chicago Suns Times, the FBI Files database. But Balistrieri somehow weathered the crisis, staying alive until 1993 when he died of natural causes at 74, outlasting Accardo, who died in 1992 at 86 and had been an important mob figure since the time of Al Capone. On April 19, 1961, confidential informant T6 advised the FBI, a disgraciad, that the Chicago hoodlum faction under Tony Accardo is feuding with Balistieri faction in Milwaukee, according to the FBI records, which note that Milwaukee's organized crime family, which Balistieri led for several decades, ultimately was beholden to the Chicago mob. According to the informant, the reason for this quarrel goes back to the murder of nightclub operator Izzy Pagrob more than a year ago, which was allegedly ordered by Frank Balistrieri. The Chicago faction, according to the informant, did not want Pagrob's murder and did not agree with his being killed, the records show. They are also angry because as a result of this murder, police vigilance has increased to the point where the hoodlum element couldn't get away with anything and aren't making any money. They was fucking up business, you copy. The informant said Balistieri was saved from the Chicago group this long because he is the nephew of one of the biggest hoodlums in Kansas City whose name had been blackened out in the dossier, had apparently tried to talk the Chicago group out of doing anything to Balistrieri. The FBI records publicly available because Balistrieri is dead, though with numerous redactions, delve into the Milwaukee mob's connections to Accardo and the Chicago mob and show Milwaukee's place in the gangster organized crime syndicate that was a powerful force in America for the better part of 20th century. An informant advised that the Milwaukee organization is under the direct supervision of the Italian organization in Chicago, which is headed by Tony Accardo. He added that Accardo attends the yearly meeting of the Milwaukee organization, according to documents. Balistrieri also promoted boxing events in Milwaukee and Accardo has a piece of those interests and informant told federal investigators. Felix Milwaukee Phil Aldericio, a Chicago gangster, also a partner in just about everything that Frank has, an informant told authorities in 1965. Frank's business interests over the years included bars, restaurants, and striptease operations. He distributed coin-operated devices, including jukeboxes. He maintained veto power over large robberies and burglaries and sold stolen items, sometimes in Chicago records show. He muscled legitimate businesses and individuals. One of the establishments, a nightclub in Milwaukee called The Scene, had considerable trouble with entertainers, with rock and roll legend Chuck Berry refusing to appear until he was paid because Frank was somewhat delinquent in his payments, according to the records. Frank then called in someone whose name is omitted in the FBI records who backed Chuck Berry in a corner and threatened him with physical violence unless he would appear. Berry did appear, but he was paid for his appearance. Frank oversaw gambling in southeast Wisconsin and some of Chicago's far north suburbs, according to FBI records, which indicate 
that in 1963, Balistrieri met with syndicate members in Chicago and stuck a deal to give him control of illegal bookmaking operations in northern Illinois, centering around Antioch, Falatine, and Zion. Probably Frank's highest profile hustle involved Las Vegas casinos, which the mob secretly controlled and skimmed the money from until the feds blew the lid off the lucrative scam in the 1980s. The case exposed links between mobsters in cities including Chicago and Kansas City, and it landed Balistrieri a lengthy prison sentence after he pled guilty to racketeering and conspiracy. He'd only recently been convicted of gambling and extortion charges with the help of FBI agent Joe Pistone, immortalized by Johnny Depp in the 1997 film, which chronicles Pistone's New York undercover work. All right, so first of all, salute to Milwaukee, Tom. Thank you for the link of the story. I believe we did a similar story like this, but still this one has a lot more information on Frank and his role in the Milwaukee uh, Mafia. So salute to you, sir, Tom. Thank you very much. You guys already know how we get down. Mob Story Season 3. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to subscribe. We're building something here from the ground up. Let me know what you're smoking on, and we're going to talk soon. Salute.